U.S. Ambassador to India Eric Garcetti participated in a conference titled Strengthening Indo-U.S. Relationship in Amritkal Atmanirbhar Bharat, organized by the Indo-American Chamber of Commerce in Delhi. During his address, Ambassador Garcetti applauded the Indian Navy for its pivotal role in assisting hijacked ships, particularly in the Indian Ocean. He commended the Navy for its commitment to safeguarding not only Indian crews, but also crews of international origin, emphasizing India's dedication to the concept of a global commons. The conference aimed to enhance bilateral ties between the United States and India, recognizing shared values and collaborative efforts for a self-reliant India. I remind my American friends and visitors, the more of India you know, the more you know you don't know and will never know. It is an endless, endless adventure and experience. So we all have to kind of create our own story within India. Those of us who are lucky enough to call India home for some time and those of you whose home country this is, to see what do we want this moment to be about. Not selfishly for ourselves, not just for our families, not for our businesses or our places of work, not even just for our nations, but together what this U.S.-India relationship is about. And I've been telling people recently, this is not India plus the United States. It is not addition, an additive relationship. It's the U.S. times India, or India times the U.S. It's multiplication, a multiplicative relationship that when we come together, it's more powerful than just the two elements for ourselves and just as importantly for our world. We witnessed that in G20 when we came together as partners to bring 18 other countries and much of the developing and developed world together behind the ideas that principles still matter. That something like democracy and empowerment is worth fighting for. That a rules-based free market system is something that on balance with the conscience of taking care of all people is a better system than something just directed by a state. We're living at our, this time at a crossroads in world history where one vision of extremism, of autocracy and authoritarianism, is different than a vision of democracy, inclusion, free markets, and growth. And make no mistake, we say this is America, and India is often looked in South Asia kind of as the America of South Asia, right? There's a burden about being big, where sometimes people resent you, and other times they say, go fix big problems. Just go take care of that. Create peace. Make sure that the lanes of the sea are free. Make sure that people abide by rules and intellectual property. Ensure that people are empowered. Take care of crises like pandemics. And that is a burden we welcome. And that increasingly I see India not only accepting but embracing. We see this recently in the Indian Ocean where the Indian Navy so heroically is helping ships who are being hijacked, freeing the crews who are not just Indian, but crews of international character because you believe in the idea of a global commons. What will we do at this moment to define the critical aspects of this age, the growth of technology and elements of artificial intelligence, of telecommunications, agriculture, those things that have changed in our lifetime so radically but are about to change even more, how will we make sure that they are harnessed for the good of people and not for the bad? With technology, we see it harm people, divide people. But we could instead, the U.S. and India together, make sure that it connects us and protects us. When we bring our minds together in higher education, as we're talking about, we have the ability to do research. Like, there was a solution that came up in academic research in the United States for all four strains of the dengue fever to be able to create a vaccine that would work for all four for the first time in human history but we didn't have the know-how of how to scale that up, how to produce it. And so now it's Indian industry that is about to release in the next coming years, knock on wood, the first dengue fever vaccine to not only eliminate that here for the Indian people, but for Africa, for other parts of the developing world, so that fewer people die and suffer. That's the U.S. times India. India times the U.S. together.